Okay, skimming can be tricky. You do not want to just read faster. You want to hear the important words in your head and just hmm <laughs> over the details because you are never going to remember all these details anyway. You want to note the important stuff that tells you what each paragraph is about. This way, you can find the answers to the questions when you inevitably go back to the passage. Let's give it a try. In temperate climates, most of us have observed the abundance of flying insects flitting around lights. <laughs> what would surprise many people is that most of these insects are actually aquatic organisms that spend the vast majority of their lives in streams. <laughs> the bulk of these organisms' lives are spent as mobile <laughs> into flying adults that disperse, breed, and ultimately deposit their eggs. <laughs> Perhaps even more surprising, though, is that these commonly observed flying stages often represent 5% or less of the total lifespan of these organisms. In the most extreme example of this life cycle, mayflies spend less than two days of their year-long life <laughs> flying. Nearly all aquatic insects are mobile, and they locomote in three basic ways, crawling, drifting, adult flight. Each of these behaviors serves a distinctly different purpose, <laughs> and the prevalence of each mode of locomotion changes with the different stages. <laughs> crawling is employed throughout the larval stage, <laughs> a basic movement behavior used to move over short distances. <laughs> Aquatic insects <laughs> are equipped with three pairs of <laughs> legs, However, in aquatic insects, these legs bear modifications that allow for efficient crawling over and through the cobbles. <laughs> these modifications include claws and setae that allow for a firm grip on the substrate. And the legs are typically splayed out to allow the organism to cling very closely to the substrate rather than producing a posture that elevates. <laughs> the last modification is important for three distinct reasons. <laughs> First is that clinging close to the substrate helps prevent the organism from being forcibly pulled off, <laughs> especially in high flow conditions. This low slung posture combined with the claws <laughs> allow for firm grip. <laughs> a second important function of a flattened posture is that it allows movement not just over substrate but through. <laughs> you are much more likely to find stream insects under or between cobbles and on top of them. Finally, a flattened posture reduces the profile of these organisms to visual predators, in particular fish, many of which feed heavily on stream insects. Crawling is the most general movement behavior, <laughs> including foraging, changing microhabitats, and evading predators. However, crawling behavior is generally limited to movement over fairly short distances. For longer distance, <laughs> other behaviors. In your head, all of this actually sounds much faster. It sounds like this. Drifting is a second, <laughs> allows for longer distance movement. It involves the organism releasing from the <laughs> and eventually settling out of the flow and back onto the substrate some distance downstream. While it may be tempting to think that drifting behavior is induced accidentally when organisms are forcibly dislodged, <laughs> a number of creative experimental studies have demonstrated that the vast majority of drifting is done with purpose. However, while the majority of insect drift is deliberate, a type of your brain is so fast. I know it seems crazy. But you really can take in certain words and skim over the rest. As long as you keep answering the question, what is this about? Now, go find some detail-filled reading that you are not particularly interested in and try it out. Happy practicing!